Deuteronomy 18. In Deuteronomy 18, we have one of the most famous passages from the book of Deuteronomy, among pastors anyway. <laughs> Not among everybody, but among pastors. So don't feel bad if, what's that? I, I've never seen that before. Don't feel bad. But um, here it is, Deuteronomy chapter 18. This is, let me give you a little bit of background. As with the rest of the book of Deuteronomy, this is Moses' last will and testament, as it were, as he gives these words, these commands, the covenant renewal for the people of Israel before they go into the promised land without him. Because Moses sinned before God. In his insecurity, he failed to trust in God. He tried to position himself as leader before the people of Israel instead of relying on God to position him. He, instead of speaking to the rock to which God told him to speak, he struck it. And the rock representing God himself should not have been struck, not the second time. You can read those accounts in Exodus chapter 17 and Numbers chapter 20. Leave it with you. That's the reason why Moses was not allowed to go into the promised land and lead the people in. Because of that, in order to prepare them to go into the promised land, he has given them this Deuteronomy and he is renewing the covenant they have with God. But any time that there is this transition, the leader has to leave the people that he has been leading. There is an element of insecurity, an element of vulnerability that the people inevitably feel. What's, what's going to happen? What's next? So Moses, he gives him a promise in verse 15. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Who is this prophet that God is going to raise, that the people will listen to? This person from among the brothers Someone, someone will rise up, will be raised up from among the people of Israel to lead them. Somebody like Moses. They will have a leader. Moses promises. What is the fulfillment of this? Well, immediately, let me just lay these things out for you. It's Joshua, right? Joshua is among the people of Israel. Joshua is raised up to follow after Moses to be a successor. After Joshua, what's the next book? Judges. Judges is, the book of Judges is the story of God's faithfulness in raising up leaders like Moses. It's a story of God's faithfulness that works through these, these very frail and broken leaders to preserve the people of Israel in spite of them, actually. Not because of their strength, but in spite of their lack thereof. Right? It's the story of God's faithfulness. God is faithful to raise up Joshua, judges, including Samuel, kings after them. But all of these fail again and again and again. And the biggest, the biggest example of that failure of these that were raised in the likeness of Moses is Samson. And we, maybe we can talk about him when we get there in the book of Judges. But then you're going to look at it and go, Ah, Pastor Paul, I know where you're going. You're going to say that this is really ultimately about Jesus. Jesus is the one who is raised up from among the brothers, among the people of Israel, Jesus is an Israelite, right? And that he is like Moses, ah, but greater than Moses. That's exactly what I would say. And you, if you are thinking that, I've been training you right. <laughs> Praise God. All of these stories are about Jesus and very many different aspects of Jesus, like looking through a diamond and seeing the different colors that are put on display of the beauty of the diamond, the beauty of the treasure of Christ, yes. But just don't take my word for it. I mean, if, if we had no other reference, I think it would be legitimate to just stay here and see that, yes, Jesus is the one 
that Moses talked about. But wouldn't it be good if the New Testament writers also saw this text as being about Jesus? They do. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. And what I see there is that Christ is sent, appointed for you, namely the Spirit of Christ to be with you, to bring you the refreshing, to bring you life. All about Jesus here. Now, verse 22 is where Peter quotes Deuteronomy 18, 22. Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him and whatever he tells you. You see that? Exactly what Deuteronomy 18 says. He says, he quotes it right here. And then verse 26. God having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. And that's talking about Jesus. Jesus is, according to Peter, the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 18. He is the one who was raised up by God from among the brothers, among the people of Israel, to be their Savior, to be God's final word, according to the book of Hebrews. It's Jesus. Definitely it's Jesus. I'm not making it up. Again, according to the book of Hebrews, I, I just love this, this part of the book of Hebrews. It has meant so much to me, especially in the light of people like Moses, leaders that we depended on, coming and going. One day I will leave you as well. I make no secret of that. I don't pretend to be able to be here forever. I will leave you. I will leave you. I will die and go on to be with the Lord. Or you will leave me for various legitimate reasons and some for illegitimate reasons too, I'm sure. But what does the Bible teach regarding that? In chapter 13 of the book of Hebrews, we find people who have lost leaders. They came, they served them, and these leaders, they left. Verse 7, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Past tense. They're not there speaking anymore. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Even in your memory, don't curse their leaving. How could they abandon us? No, no. Just remember the good and imitate the good, the Christ-like goodness. And I love it. Verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your leaders, your parents, your pastors, your Lord's Day school teachers, your friends who have been so instrumental to your faith, they are not meant to be there forever. This person is my rock. He's my heart. Yeah? But remember, even if this is your husband or wife you're talking about, love them like crazy, but hold on loosely. Only Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, just like Moses had to pass on. Many of your friends are going to come in and leave your life. The sooner you realize this, the better it will be for your spiritual health. Understand this. Love them. Just because they leave one day doesn't mean they didn't love you. Love them, knowing that this love comes from King Jesus, and Jesus and his love never, ever leaves and never disappoints. So you can love like crazy, hold on to people loosely, because Jesus, 
who holds on to you will never let you go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us King Jesus, a prophet from among our brothers, one who knows us, who knows me better than I know myself, who writes my tears in his, bo- in his book and saves them in his bottle, cares for me better than I can care for myself, loves me more than anyone. And this one, this one, unlike my pastors, unlike my friends, unlike my family, he never leaves. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Help us, Lord, to rely on this fact. Especially, I pray for my brother and sister whose heart is broken through disappointment in someone on whom they relied. Lord, let them see that that disappointment was a good thing. It's a moment of clarity that only Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let that truth be the bedrock of their heart now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hosanna, 